Hello everyone and welcome to our session today on integrated payment processing in Dynamics 365 Business Central. Joining us today is Mark Pyle and Anne-Marie Villahermosa. They are both from Century Business Solutions and we're excited to have such a fantastic turnout today. Before I pass it over to Mark and Anne-Marie, I would like to let you know that this session is being recorded and it will be posted to our on-demand webinar library later this week for you to review and share with anyone. And if you do have any questions, please feel free to type those in the questions box and we will get them answered during our Q&A time at the end of our session. And so now I will pass it on to Anne-Marie and she will kick off our presentation. Thank you, Angie, for that awesome <laughs> welcome. Um, yes, my name is Anne-Marie Villahermosa. I am the Partner Enablement Manager here at Century Business Solutions, and we are going to showcase our Dynamics 365 uh, EBIS charge integration for you. Um, just so you can uh, make you know, receiving payments easy. You can actually do it within Dynamics 365 uh, BC and it will automatically update. We do have a couple other uh, products as well, including our online payment portal. And you can even uh, include a link in your emails to uh, collect payments. So all to help your, uh, you know, easy to, I'm sorry, <laughs> all to help ease the pain of, you know, getting your AR. Um, so just a little bit about Century Business Solutions. We have been around since 2004. Uh, we do have uh, lots of integrations um, to even um, web stores and that sort of thing. Uh, whether or not you have an online store, we can look into integrating to that as well. Uh, but we are your one-stop shop in regards to payments. Uh, we do the um, programming, we, we are the Sorry, we do provide the gateway um, and the uh, in-house support, as well as the chargeback team as well, and uh, all here in Irvine, California. So just to kind of show you that we are a legitimate company, we actually just made the Inc. 5000 for the third year in a row. Uh, we got another CV award this year as well. And um, actually, the Better Business Bureau is one of our customers. They use our customer payment portal. So we're going to show you that, too. Um, and of course, as I had mentioned earlier, the benefits of this charge is you know, to streamline your AR process. Um, and we do ensure that everything is PCI compliant. So you're rest assured that um, there's no uh, chance of um, anyone getting those credit card numbers, so they won't be in Dynamics 365. They will be in a vault. Um, we wanted to kind of go over that too, but you are able to accept credit, debit, and EMV payments within Microsoft Dynamics 365. Um, so Mark will actually be showing you that in a, just a little bit. So like I said, we do have a couple other products. One of them is our customer payment portal, um, and we also have, offer email pay, but uh, the Better Business Bureau is actually using us to uh, collect their, um, their membership. So uh, the other option, of course, is email pay, where you can actually send an email to your customer, and there is a link in there for them to come to a secure web page and pay off that invoice. Uh, we do offer um, uh, are the credit card app in Google, for Android and uh, Apple. So that is also available as well as EMV chip readers. Uh, these are the two that we are certified to work with. So if you need to uh, do EMV, uh, we have that solution for you. And in regards to our gateway, we do um, you know, also offer, you know, robust reporting within there. But like I said, we do have a chargeback team that will also work with you. Um, and, you know, rest assured that we are really proactive with that to make sure that you keep your money. Um, and that is pretty much it. I am going to turn it over to Mark and he will show you a live presentation. Perfect. Andy. Thanks, Anne-Marie. 
Oh, awesome. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. Uh, hopefully everyone should now see a business central environment up on the display. Can you see that, Anne-Marie? Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So as was already highlighted, I just wanted to give a brief introduction of myself. My name is Mark Pyle. I'm here with the support department here at Century Business Solutions. Uh, part of what I do here on a day-to-day -day basis is not only demonstrations like what we'll be covering here today, but also the implementation and training of how to utilize our integrations and things of that nature. Uh, and throughout the course of the demonstration today, I do suggest that if anyone does have any questions, please take note of that as we will be doing a Q&A at the end of the call. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. Uh, with that being said, uh, what I will be highlighting for you all today is a lot of the basic principles of what our integration will allow you to do in regards to your credit card processing needs, whether that's done through a sales order invoice or on a customer record. All right, and then uh, as Enri had mentioned, we actually have a lovely customer payment portal where customers can view invoices online at their convenience and make payments, and those payments will actually automated come back into the business central environment. There's no manual reconciliation process required. So those that's just a overview highlight of what I'm gonna be covering today. Uh, with that being said, I'll go ahead and just jump right into it and start today with showing you some examples on transactions through a sales order. Now, the first thing I wanna highlight here is a lot of the data entry that I'm gonna be doing is relatively standard business central data entry. It should be uh, something you're probably already familiar with if you're working within business central at the moment. Otherwise, just know that it's a relatively standard format here. I'm just gonna select a resource. Let's say I'm renting a lift here for about three hours time. That brings my grand total to 1350 for this order. At this point in time, I do have the ability to scroll down through my sales order that my payment method code that I'm going to be utilizing is going to be our, our credit card payment method. So I'm gonna scroll down and just select credit card. This is the payment method code that is tied to our eBiz integration. Once I've selected that payment method code, you're gonna have the ability to actually go ahead and select your various credit cards for the customer. So on the right hand side, I have a drop down window. I can make a selection between all of my different cards for the customer account. Now, I want to highlight for you how these credit cards are here. This is my saved customer that I test with frequently. Therefore, I've saved credit cards to their profile so I can use them for a faster transactional process in the future. These credit cards are stored and housed in a tokenized format. You can see I've selected one of them here. The card does end in the digits 2224. I can see the expiration date. And take note of the fact that there is no full cardholder information visible. There's no full card number. There's no CVV code. There's no you know, sensitive information, if you will, either visible in the interface here or stored in your business central data tables. That information was actually sent through an encrypted message at the time that you save a credit card to our eBiz vault here at Century Business Solutions. That liability for you and house that data so that way you are just left with a reference So scrolling down to the bottom here, you can see that, uh, again, I can pick and choose between the various cards and do know that these cards are unique and specific to just this one customer. Although there are several cards, these are just for today. So I'll go ahead and just select the credit card that I wanna use for this particular transaction. And I'm gonna go ahead and at this point in time, have the ability to either pre-authorize the credit card at the time that we generate the sales order, or perhaps we're working with a customer where maybe we're doing a custom order and we wanna take this as a deposit up front. We can absolutely do that through our functions. So I'm gonna go into actions, functions, and we can have the ability to authorize card, charge card, or swipe card. 
I know during Anne Marie's introduction, she had mentioned to you that we also support point of sale devices, uh, the EMV and chip reading capable devices that were listed on the screen moments ago. This is where that swipe card functionality would come into play. For this first example, I wanna keep things pretty straightforward. So I'm just gonna go ahead and charge the card outright. We're gonna run a deposit at this time. Once I've selected the option, a window has populated letting us know that there's already a credit card saved to this document. Do we want to use that for the transaction? I'll go ahead and say yes. Had we not selected a credit card, we would have the ability to go ahead and make our selection at this time. So don't worry, if you forget to select your card prior to running your action, a window will pop up letting you make that card selection. Everything's gone through at this point in time. The way that we know that is there was no pop-up window, no message telling us if there was on the off chance you ran into a transaction decline or something of that nature. And we can see here under the captured amount, I now have the 1350 that was processed. So I know that this particular order has been successfully captured. And then we can go ahead and post this per your normal process. One of the things that I would like to highlight for you at this point in time, now that we've discussed the basic and general concepts of what transactional options are available to you at the sales order level, is showing you a little bit about how this relates to the customer record. So I'm gonna back out of the customer, or I should say the sales order there, and I'm gonna jump over and let's go take a look at the customer record I was just working with. Couple quick things to know. First and foremost, if you needed to manage credit cards on the customer record, we would simply hit the customer button, credit cards option will display, at this point in time, you can see this is a full list of all of the credit cards that have ever been saved against this customer record. Again, I have to stress to you, the reason there are so many cards here is because as a test customer, I work with a lot and I'll resave a credit card and things of that nature. And if you've ever processed a credit card against a customer record within Business Central, it's saved to a document. So Business Central no longer allows for the removal of that credit card as it's referenced against a payment record. Instead, what we have is the ability to either hide or block a credit card. Let's say, for example, this particular credit card token I know is a duplicate. I don't want to actually have this visible at the time that I would be creating a sales order, creating an invoice, and wanting to actually receive payment. All we need to do is go ahead and select that this card is a blocked card. And now going forward, I will not see this as an available option at the time of a transaction. This can be blocked or unblocked as you need. And just to kind of reiterate, if you did ever by chance add a credit card that a customer needed to remove, you can absolutely do so, so long as the card has not been used for any transactions at that point. So that's just a, a quick overview, highlight kind of recap of how the credit card addition management side of things works in this scenario. Uh, of course, if we were to add a new card, which actually this is a good opportunity to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and add in my contact information here. My billing information is already populated based on the customer record I'm looking at. And I can go ahead and key in the credit card as is provided to me. And once I finish entering in the expiration date and I tab out of this field, You'll notice there's a little loading arrow next to expiration date and immediately my credit card tokenizes. That's how quick the process is in regards to the saving and PCI compliance storage. Uh, as I mentioned to you moments ago, if this credit card has not been used for any transactional purposes, you actually still have the ability to simply delete the card. There you go. So that was just a, a of card management for you today. One feature I always like to highlight anytime I'm going through business central functionality with the eBiz integration is actually something that's a little bit unique in the ability to run a payment against a customer record. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually navigate back to the customer account here and show you how we can take a deposit upfront prior to any document generation whatsoever. 
So give me just a second here. It looks like my page actually timed out on me. I've had it open quite a bit this morning. And I'm going to bring back our customer here. So now that I'm back at the customer's account, all I need to do in order to run a payment against their record is go into Actions, Functions, and we have the ability to process payment on account. One thing I always like to mention here as well is, of course, we can add in a brand new credit card just like we could at the order level, or we can make a selection from our saved credit cards already on file. I'm going to actually do something a little bit unique here as well, is I'm going to go ahead and do a split payment. So I'm going to go ahead and say this is test transaction number one, the document number is 987, and we'll run this through for, say, $60 on the first card. All I'm going to do is hit add, and this will add that credit card to a list that I'm going to run the full transactions for. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and choose perhaps a different credit card that I want to split the remainder of the payment to. I'll give it a different description name. Uh, maybe I'm going to have a different document number here for it. And then if this one, maybe I want to run this one through for $110. Once I've done so, I could continue to add it to the list and continue to populate that list of credit cards. Or in this instance, I'm just gonna run the two cards with the click of one button by hitting OK. At this point in time, both of the transactions were successfully processed. And to show you that, I'm gonna jump into the ledger history here. And you can see both of the payments are listed here on the customer record. There's my description test one and test two, the $60 amount and the $110. These can then be applied towards invoices and sales orders that are yet to be created for this particular customer. So that gives us a good foundation of the eBiz processing supported on the Business Central side. The next piece of what I would like to demonstrate for you today is the ability to generate either from a sales order or directly at the invoice level, an invoice to be delivered to your customers where they can make payments securely online at their convenience. The way that we're gonna do this, I'm actually gonna start through a sales order. The way that we do this is very similar to what you had seen with the first example today. There's one key difference. I'm gonna select my customer, my line item detail, almost exactly like our first example today. And we'll go ahead and say this is a rental for a larger time frame. So we're up to a $3,600 invoice that we're sending out. Instead of selecting the payment method code as credit card, like you might remember from our first example, instead I'm gonna go ahead and actually go down to our invoice details, and there's a selection where we can choose what's called our payment service. I'll simply hit the ellipsis here to add the payment service for eBiz Charge Connect, that is the customer payment portal, and hit OK. At this point in time, all I need to do in order to have this invoice sent to the portal and the customer simultaneously notified is post the document. So I'm going to go ahead and post this. And I'm actually going to put, uh, print up a quick copy of the invoice as well here so you can see what that looks like. And for the sake of the demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and ship and invoice these together. Of course, if you had to do this uh, individually, you wanted to ship invoice compartmentalized, you can absolutely do so. Just for the sake of brevity, I'll do these together. At this point in time, our invoice has been successfully uploaded to the customer payment portal where they can log in to make their payment. You might recall Emery had mentioned at the beginning of our phone call today that uh, the Better Business Bureau actually utilizes this portal. This is their login screen. We use this as an example to show kind of what the customer will experience from their perspective when they click the link to go log in and make their payments. Of course, it's been branded here for the Better Business Bureau with their name, their URL, and this image is actually one they'd requested as well. All of this will be catered to your specific needs. 
keep in mind, going forward at this point in time, everything will be from the customer's perspective. So I'm going to go ahead and log in here as my customer today, Aldred. Aldred has a couple of outstanding invoices on his account. We can make a selection to highlight all invoices. We can pick and choose between them. We can even do a partial payment if that's something you choose to allow your customers to do. That's something that is fully customizable within the administrative side of this portal. I mentioned the administrative side of the portal because it's important in the regard that it will give you the ability to do control when your customers are notified automatically, what these notifications look like and what functionalities they'll have available to them. So that way we can really cater that the platform behaves how you need it to. Uh, at this point in time, what I want to do is just go ahead and pay off one of these outstanding invoices. I'll go ahead and select this $788 balance due, and I'm going to opt to pay this by credit card. Now, the customer can enter these fields on an individual basis, one, one number at a time, one field at a time. If, however, the customer should so choose, they do have the option to save a payment method. Once I tab over to saved payment methods, you can see once again it is storing that credit card in tokenized format. Again, fully PCI compliant, no full cardholder data visible. Your customer then will provide their CVV2 code and be able to process their payment. At this point in time, the customer can see, great, my transaction was approved, there's my reference code, I can email myself a copy of this receipt. However, they don't have to. They can always go into the reports once they're logged into the customer portal, and they can view their payment history, a listing of all of their invoices for the life of the account. So from their first payment onward, they'll have access to all of that data. From your perspective, when your customers have completed a payment, you'll be notified automatically with the receipt of that payment. That way throughout the day, maybe you receive you know, a dozen or so different notifications. And as I mentioned at the very beginning of our call, the reconciliation of these online payments is actually done on an automated downloader back into your business central environment. There's no manual process required. So every so often in time-based intervals, the payment will get automatically brought into your business central and reflected against the customer record where you can view it just like we were looking earlier when we went into the customer general ledger. And of course, it'll be applied against the invoice or the document that you had originally uploaded to the portal for them to pay. Now, I want to retrace our steps here briefly because there's one thing I want to highlight to you in regards to when I posted that invoice. When I posted the invoice, I also opted to send a copy of the invoice. If you choose to send a copy of the um, Business Central invoice directly, I apologize, it looks like my development team's working in the background, so they keep timing me out. Uh, but what I was mentioning here uh, is the ability to send a copy of the invoice directly from Business Central. For example, the invoice that I had just posted earlier was the lift for eight hours, totaling $3,600. And you'll notice this is a pretty standard invoice for Business Central. However, there's one thing that's a little bit unique. You might have caught your eye already. We do have this eBiz Charge Connect logo that shows pay with credit card. In this logo, there's an embedded URL. If we open that URL and we jump over to the page, you'll see that what it contains is a secure payment form that is unique and specific to that one invoice. Of course, this will again be branded to fit your needs, but it does let the customer know that it is a TLS encrypted connection and it is secure format. At this point in time, they simply would complete the fields as are listed on the order form here. Once they complete that and they hit the pay now button, again, just like what you had seen just a moment ago on the eConnect side or the customer payment portal side, I should say, 
Um, we do receive a notification letting us know that the transaction was completed successfully. The customer can also email themselves a copy of the receipt and on your end, you'll receive an automated copy of that receipt as well. Again, just so that way you've got another way to trace the amount of online payments you've received for that day. Back over in the Business Central side, just like I had mentioned with the customer payment portal, that payment will be applied against the customer record against the invoice that it was created on. So if I go in here and let's do a lookup of my customer plane mark that we've been working with today. Go ahead and dive in here, and we should see there it is, our $3,600. So that's kind of the, the process. Now you'll notice I have the invoice here. Uh, the payment is not here just yet. The payment's on an automated downloader. Um, I've been told that is approximately a 15 minute window at which it'll find those payments. Um, so that's just kind of what to expect from that scenario. It'll bring them in just like you see the other payments here from when I did my payments on the record. With that being said, that summarizes a lot of the key concepts of what I wanted to show you today in regards to Business Central, the processing side of things. The next piece that I would like to highlight for everyone is more along the lines of the reporting. Uh, you will have access to what we call our Merchant Console Access. The Merchant Console is your reporting gateway for the eBiz Charge Payment Gateway. I'm gonna go ahead and log in here today and I'm gonna navigate over into our uh, Business Central or NAV environment so we can see those transactions that we've been working in. From here, we're looking at what we call the Batch Manager screen. The Batch Manager shows us the sum total of our transactional activity for the day. All of this information is available for you at any point in time. If you need to log in and find any extra detail, you can. However, you do not have to log in here. This batch will actually auto-close for you. In addition to the batch auto-closing, we send out an automated batch settlement report. So every day at end of day, the batch will close. You'll be notified with what the closure was, what the dollar amount was, and that dollar amount you see in that report should match the deposit you see in your bank account. If ever possible, we will always try and set you up with what we would refer to as next day funding, which would mean the very next business morning, you would see the deposit to your record. Now, before I proceed with showing you some more of the reports here, I always like to hover uh, over some of the additional options in regards to customizing. You'll notice my report below does show information such as the customer ID, the invoice numbers, the transaction ID. If you found this report to be missing anything or perhaps you don't need something like the transaction ID, you can simply drag and drop any of these fields in any structure you like in the current fields category. When I hit save, it's gonna update my report and you'll notice my transaction ID is no longer listed as a visible column. Also under the options, you might have noticed that there's this export button. You can export this to a CSV file. Say your batch might be pretty large and you want to have a, a way to filter through it and you prefer working through CSV or Excel, you can absolutely do that. Or you can print this and email it. This is, of course, available with not only today's batch that we're currently looking at, but you would actually have access to every batch for the life of your account. So you can see I have a quick preview of the last five days worth of batches or so here. Or I can quite simply hit show all batches and I can scroll through and find a particular batch period I'm looking for and then select my transaction. Let's just say Blaine Mark had reached out to me and said I need a receipt for my $2,700 that we paid off uh, last month on the 11th. Well, here it is. I found it. I can go ahead and print and email receipts as needed. One other thing I briefly would like to highlight is there's a search bar. Instead of keying in information and, and kind of sifting through looking for the batch history, if you wanted to instead just key in, for example, the last four digits of a credit card, you could do that. And then it populates with transaction IDs that match that last four. If instead you wanted to try and key in a specific dollar amount, I could key that in as well. 
this was a much more specific result, I can jump straight to that transaction. And that search bar will work with just about anything you can think of. Email contact, invoice number, last four of a card, uh, transaction ID, you name it. Anything you're looking for, just punch in and it'll get your results. Last but not least, I want to highlight the reporting options we have from our pre-made reports. Sales by date and credit card are probably the two most commonly utilized. However, I always like to mention that we do also have errors and declines. Not every time you run a credit card does it go through. Sometimes the bank might respond with a decline. It could be as simple as a response such as insufficient funds, which is pretty straightforward, just lets you know that you might want to request an alternative payment method from the cardholder. I briefly just wanted to highlight for you that these reports are pretty straightforward to navigate. We'll jump in, we'll set a date range. You can either use year to date, you can use your own date range. Let's just say, you know what, I wanna go from April 1st to uh, August 1st. I'll hit done to update my filter for that window. I can then search for the type of transaction I'm looking for. Do I wanna find sales only, refunds and so on? What response had it received? Maybe I only wanna see approved transactions. I have no interest in looking at the declined transactions in this particular report. And then the status would be whether or not this transaction successfully settled or if it's still pending. In this instance, I wanna see something that is already settled. Once I've finished setting my filters, again, you can print email or export, or you can simply scroll down and just review it here directly through your web browser. The nice thing about that is all of these rows are interactable. So while I'm scrolling through, if I'm saying, okay, well, John Doe here had reached out to me and they needed a copy of the receipt. While I'm here, I might as well send that over. We'll just jump in, scroll to the top here, go ahead and email a receipt out to them. Simply include their email contact, hit send, and then you're done. You can jump back to your report and move on to what you might need to do next. That does cover the majority of what I wanted to mention with everyone today. There's one last key point that I, I think I'd like to end on, and that's that we do support the ability to enforce additional layers of security for your transactions should you so choose to utilize them. We have a full suite of fraud manager modules that are supported within our gateway. An example of that would be the address verification response or perhaps the card ID response, the CVV2 code you might be familiar with. If you're thinking, you know what, we really would like to make sure that this information matches any time we process a transaction, we can actually enable it on any source of transaction through our eBiz charge gateway. For example, if you wanted to have relatively strict requirements on the address verification, we could simply disable all options other than the top two here, which clearly state that the address must match and the five digit zip must match, or the nine digit zip must match. So long as the criteria meet these two responses, then the transaction will be permitted to process. If any of the other responses are received, then that transaction would be rejected by the eBiz gateway and would not actually be processed. So this is just a, a real quick example of what I wanted to highlight for you. There's a lot of different options that are supported here within the fraud module settings. I just wanted to give everyone a, an idea that we can absolutely, again, kind of get into the customization for your specific needs. Uh, with that being said, that does conclude the technical portion of the demonstration that I wanted to highlight for everyone today. Um, so, Emery, if you want, I can hand the call back over to you, or Angie, I'm, I'm not sure who wanted to take point from here in regards to the Q&A. I can do that, Mark. Thank you very much for presenting. Yeah, my pleasure. All right, it does not appear that we have any questions for you, um, but if anyone does, please feel free to get those typed into the questions box and we will get them answered for you. All right, Anne-Marie, do you have anything that you would like to add? Okay, well, Angie, if there's no questions uh, brought up at this moment, um, feel free to either forward anything that might come up 
after the demonstration kind of set in today. Maybe somebody will think of questions after the fact. Uh, feel okay. free to forward those over to Anne Marie or myself here over at Century, and I'd be happy to answer any questions as they come up. Um, otherwise, yeah, just let us know if there's anything further we can provide. All right. Well, thank you, Mark, for presenting, and to everyone on today's call, or if you're watching on demand, thank you for joining us. And I just want to let you know that we do have a few more webinars coming soon. Next Tuesday, August 27th, we have Holly Kudel from Inovia Consulting, and she's going to be doing a webinar with her entire support team. Um, so we're going to have lunch with the Inovia support team, and um, it's kind of going to be a free-for-all um, webinar and open discussion type of thing, so um, you can get a chance to talk to our support team, and she'll give you a lot of information um, about uh, her team. And then on Wednesday, the 28th, we have Richard Lee from Dynamic Web, and he's going to be presenting on boosting conversions for B2B users. And check out our website for more of our up upcoming events, and that's anovia.com slash events. And we also want to mention that we do have our new podcast going on. It's called the Anovia Conversation. And if you have not um, been to our podcast site by now, uh, the address is anovia.com slash podcast. You can check out all the different podcast platforms to listen to and subscribe so you won't miss any new episodes that air. And Anovia is proud to present um, the uh, sponsorship of BCUG NAVUG Summit in Orlando, Florida this year, and that's October 13th through the 15th. And if you haven't already registered, uh, please feel free to um, go to our website, and that's anovia.com slash conferences, and you can get all the information about Summit um, and register for that event. All right. Well, thank you again for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again soon on another Anovia webinar. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, Mark.